Hey everyone, and welcome to the Doctors of Running podcast, where we, a group of doctors of physical therapy, talk about the art and the science of the things that we put on our feet. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with Dr. Salas, and uh, you know, we were going to talk about something completely different, and we started a conversation <laughs> off air, and we're going to continue it onwards, because I think this is going to be really interesting. So our conversation today is going to be about super shoes. I know we talk about this a lot, but it's going to go a little more in depth and build off of one of the things we talked about a couple weeks ago being, do you get the same training stimulus in super shoes and how is that affecting athletes? How is that affecting us? So we're going to talk about how that might be affecting elites, how that might be affecting recreational runners, what that might mean, how to think about that from a training stimulus, just because this is the stuff we kick out on and we want to, well, we want to just hear what you think as well. What we should also mention, oh, should I tell them or should I wait till the end to tell people so they have to listen to the end to find out the special secret thing? Ooh, special secret, special yeah. secret. Let's do like a, uh, we'll find a convenient point in the middle. Yeah, we'll find a convenient point. So stick around if you can handle us talking for that long. It, you'll find that we'll make it worth your time. So Dr. Salas, where are you in your training right now? What what sparked the initial part of this conversation? Our subjective, by the way, that we want you to talk about is how have you felt with the with training shoes coming into your rotation, if they are, how has that impacted your training in terms of what have you been able to do with it? How do you feel like it's affecting your recovery? Very open-ended question, but how has it affected your training? So Dr. Salas, what started this conversation? How did we get here? Yeah, so essentially you want to see, you know, with advancements in footwear, what is the impact on your body over the, you know, plethora of distances that mm -hmm. you can race? And how does that fit in a training cycle? How does that fit in recovery, et cetera, et cetera? And the reason why this all came about was I'm in the middle of a track season. So I'm going to be running a 5K here coming up this weekend. And I'm still trying to figure out myself if I want to run in flats or spikes. Right. And I'm not running world athletic standard, like world championships. I don't, You're faster yeah, than me. I don't, David, I don't need I'm to adhere to this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super excited to see what David could do because he's the fastest of the group. But I, I'm sending all my... All my fast <laughs> thoughts to you this season, but yeah. Well, it, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I don't really care about the 25 millimeter thing that went into effect, what, a right. couple of years ago. Yeah. Like, and truth be told, this is actually a very interesting question in and of itself. Yeah. The flat, because remember before people would race in either spikes and some people did opt to run in flats. flats Were those yeah. flats over 25? Yeah. They might have been. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, probably. Like yeah. the Lunar Racer or something like that. That was yeah. probably over 25. I don't remember and people the stack ran yeah, they ran in 10Ks in that, you know, or 5Ks. So yeah. that would technically be an illegal shoe now. But yeah. <laughs> so anyways, that's completely besides the point. Um, but no, I was trying to figure out whether or not running economy. No, it's not. You, it, you got a, that up per, quick. Per uh, a previous site, it said that no longer exists, actually. The Nike Lunar Racer was 24 millimeters in the heel, 17 in the forefoot wow. for a 7 millimeter drop. I don't know if that includes the insole or not, but dang, that felt so much. You know what? Yeah, this is I was going to say that. Shoes that feel like swear was higher stack height, but it's probably lower than we really realized you know, now that we And it's probably yeah. a product of the times because we were also running in these like super minimal yeah. track spikes that who knows what the millimeter stack on that was. Dude, I did like, a half marathon. I did several half marathons in the original Takumi Sens, which like barely had anything there. Right. Those would be like a mile 5K shoe, not even now. And so that oh just gosh. shows you how far we've come, right? Like that- yeah. So that answers that question. Yeah, it was, was very track plush. legal. Yeah. yeah, I guess it was technically track legal. Yeah. Um, so completely off the point. But yeah. yeah, trying to figure out, you know, like yeah. with running economy benefits, does that actually matter in a 5K, right? right. When you look at running or below, yeah. yeah. Like if you run, a, a, you go and look at metabolic economy, running economy, the paces that you're doing at in theory are going to be somewhere around your marathon pace. And so let's say you are a super responder and you respond six, 7% to a given shoe that's at your marathon pace, right? Like things can completely change when the pace goes faster than that. And plus in a controlled environment, you're not running in a straight line, you're doing constant left turns. And so does that change when you're running in a real life situation, trying to compete and go fast, you know, at a 5k, 10k distance? And I don't know if I fully know the answer to that. And that's kind of what sparked this mm -hmm. um, as far as like beneficial reactions. And like you could always make the argument like, oh, well, if you train your calves up, you'll just be fine in spikes. 
which is a fair argument. But at the same time, it's like, what's truly the better option? Right. And like, I don't actually know. Right, because what with super shoes, the benefits that we're talking about is the max stock height of a special foam, and emphasis on the special foam, because not everybody has seemed to figure that out. Although most companies have the special foam, the plate to to stabilize that foam and direct forces, the geometry to make things efficient because the foam is so tall, and then obviously being on the lighter side. Now, tra- I don't think there's a single super shoe on the market anyway that is li- that a true super shoe, not these like lower stack you know, shoes that don't max out the everything and maximize the foams. There's some more like 5k, 10k flats out there, but you know, they're not nearly as light still as all the track spikes. The track spikes are still in that like low five ounce, like four ounce range, maybe a teeny bit above six for one of them that you know, well, you like, have like yeah. the Saucony, like Terminal VT, yeah, is, like high like, threes, yeah, and uh, so, yeah, I'm you're totally, sure. you're totally yeah, right. Like, yeah, that is like feather light, right? So you, know? you have to remember that track spikes now have gotten a little bit higher stacks. So they've got the push cushion that takes the edge off. They have the stiffening agent still, which used to be more PBAX plates, and now we're starting to see more carbon, but. The biggest benefit to them is that weight. And we know from evidence that as you go down in weight, it, things are more economical for, to a certain point, right? If you're running barefoot, it's not economical, right? You have to have, you have to have some cushioning there. But the question comes up is when you go over these shorter distances, what's really beneficial? Having more cushioning and higher stack or having that kind of more lower stack and that super lightweight plus the grip. And that's not something we ha- we've mentioned yeah, on, the, the, on the podcast is the traction the, from the spikes and the spike setup, which I'm sure someone studied that. I don't know next to anything yeah. about it. I'm not going to lie. You go yeah. kicking in a track spike, you're going right. to feel a million times better than any super shoe on your right. foot. That's that could be like the bottom of the bottom track spike, yeah. like just your traction, like in your ability to get onto the track and really grip and pull. Yeah. Like, that that's hard to beat that right you now because and i don't know how that affects uh, if anybody has experience with that please comment below i'm really curious the only thing i know comes from my clinical experience was one of the i forget what track spike it was i think it was an old one that somebody was using like one of the air kennedy's or something like but um it was one of the ones that was mi- it's a it's a distant spike that was missing a spike on uh, near the fifth met so <laughs> oh yeah turn, people were doing that for a little bit yeah, yeah. when you turn there was nothing <laughs> stabilized and i had two masters runners that came to me when i was at costa Clina, and they were both having peroneal issues because when they try to pivot off there there was nothing to grip so they ended up having to really pronate and that put the peroneus peroneal muscles kind of in a better position to work and they were overworking that which was exacerbated by some calf weakness so that just kind of forced where they were going. So I know you need to have an even spike distribution a, a, across the foot. I don't know anything else about that in terms of how that affects economy other than personal yeah. testimonial, like you said, where it's like, it just feels better. And you mentioned that because you're the one, I'm not doing Trek split stuff right now, but spikes like feel so much better for pace changes. Like totally. at those like- distances. And even even in a 5K or 10K, like if you've run in a competitive 5K, 10K field, I know you have, but yeah. more for the viewers, like yeah, like there's a, a lot time. of yeah, but there's a lot of jostling, right? There like is. there's a yeah. there's a lot of like kind of stop go, like yeah. people are accidentally making contact with each yeah. other. Heaven forbid, no one gets actually spiked. But it's very like, rare to have a consistent pace, like, and it's not just exactly. that. It's people yeah. are aggressive. They're like like cut, like and going, then someone like, makes a move, a and move. then yeah. like yeah. yeah, and then you got to cover it, right? And like just anecdotally like even in workouts when i have been in spikes versus when i have not been in spikes if someone makes some kind of a move where like you negative split two three seconds on a lap like that's a very noticeable change over 400 meters and like that being able to cover that move in spikes is so much easier than it is in flats like it feels like in these super shoes which i have worn on the track before like it feels almost clunky at first yep. like it almost is like you kind of have to figure that change in pace out and then yep. once you're up you're okay but like that little bit can actually impact how a race goes with how fast some of these moves are made I'm like one- you almost have to be like really like vigilant i mean we're talking if you're trying to like win races and be in it and be competitive obviously if you're running consistent splits 
you know, in a perfect world, it probably wouldn't matter as much. But as far as like being in context to the race in front of you, like that can very easily happen. Right. I, I definitely agree. I think I, I'm curious because spikes, right? You've got the spikes. They're much lighter. It's much easier to turn over. There's also not as much foam, whereas with the super shoes. And the reason I bring this up is I'm getting miles on the SC Elite 4 right now, which is a, a great shoe to do long runs in, like up tempo runs, a marathon pace. That thing doesn't do anything faster than that for me. Like I cannot, I, I have trouble pushing that shoe and being able to maintain that faster speed and changing paces, paces. I'm wondering if that's because with so much more foam, there's more compression, right? And that compression takes time, right? There's, it takes right. time to compress and to bounce back, which is going to do great over half, even 10 K 10 K half. Yeah. You're in a rhythm. You're, yeah. Go to sleep. Just run your splits. Right. Yeah. But when it comes to like 5k, 1500, stuff like that, for people that are running at the paces that you are like that really fast stuff, that makes sense for the rest of us. Like myself for a 5k, it may not, you know, like road stuff like that. It may just make more sense to have a super shoe. But when you're starting to go at those faster paces and how the shoe responds, how quickly the foam responds, how quickly it responds, makes more sense to me that, you know, maybe these super foams and this economy stuff doesn't make as much of an effect over these shorter distances. And, you know, that gives more flexibility to what foams you can use, how you set that stuff up. So there's other factors that are outside of my expertise in terms of how you design track mm -hmm. spikes and things like that, because I just don't have enough experience do it like, you know, using them for several years. I've got a couple that I've been able to review from like a fit performance standpoint, but I have my own limitations on that. But I, I yeah, totally and then get like, where going. Yeah. Yeah. And then like devil's advocate to myself, yeah. I see guys like Dylan Jacobs, shout out Dylan Jacobs, like running in a vapor fly on the track and having zero issues right. covering moves and kicking and doing right. things. And then like some of the BYU boys before they made the stack height rule, like they were also that doing the cranking. same thing and yeah. ripping. Like Clayton Young was one of them. Like yeah. he was there before the rule. And it's like, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting because yeah. I know when I'm kicking, I feel better in spikes. And that's a, that's a fair point too. The word kicking, right? Yeah. Like we're talking the last 800 meters, maybe probably less even like you're kind of ramping it up, but true kicking is probably going to be somewhere between one and 400 meters, depending on where you're going, like truly going after it. And that's such a short period right. of your race. That's 12 and a half laps. That's one lap or less <laughs> right. where you're actually at that point. And so that's another thing where it's like, does it actually matter? I don't, I don't know if it does. And that's a, that's a, a question I'm chewing on myself. I will say in this, I'm bringing the, I need to give you credit for this because it's something you talked about that to be devil's advocate on this, the, the, the opposite way to think about this is you talked about comfort. What's going to be most comfortable? What's going to keep you healthy and actually get you through the race? What can you actually control throughout the race? So this is my advocate. So someone like yourself, that's been doing stuff in track spikes, I think for the last couple of weeks, correct? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. three, yeah. Four ish weeks now, yeah. but not full workouts though. We're talking maybe second half of the workout, you know, you switch into them. So that uh -huh. way I can walk the next day. Got it. You know, so this like does apply to you because you said <laughs> yeah. you're not sure. Can you handle track spikes for a 5k? So for the rest of us, especially those of us, as we're starting to get a little bit older and, you know, David and I are still very young, but as you start getting into your mid late thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, seventies plus, you got to ask yourself, what tool is actually going to get you through the race? So we we often talk about this going the marathon distance. People are like, I want the, the fastest super shoe. And it's like, yeah, the, the fastest shoe may not get you through the end of the race. And I know 5K is not that long, but when you're talking about some of these super aggressive track spikes that are low, yeah. if not zero drop, if not negative drop sometimes, you got to ask yourself, can your calves handle that? So from an injury prevention and a finishing the race standpoint, that's something else to think about. Like myself... I would need several months to prep my body, even though I run in a lot of ultra and things like that. I, I would need several months to prepare if I was going to do a full 5k in track spikes, just because yes, performance is one thing, but like you said, I want to be able to run and race the next week or so. I don't want to get injured. And that's something, you know, I'm not trying to scare people, but it's a, a thing is what, where is your limit to? And that goes in the opposite with super shoes. Like I said, is like, Yes, it's the super fast feeling like max sack height shoe, but can you control that for a marathon distance? Sometimes the fastest shoe may not be the one that helps you achieve the highest performance because your own body is the other thing that you need to consider. And that's individual. 
I think the answer is I just get a Adidas Evo one, get a five ounce super shoe and there you go. Just, it's the same weight as a track spike. You're fine. Got it. So just every, so that the <laughs> no. Evo one is the you answer. You just get both. Both yeah, the you, track you just, and marathon. You just, just get both. Forget it. Yeah. The $500 <laughs> shoe. That, I'm still that drooling lasts. over well, and hey, mad. Hey, if it, that, if it, if it yeah. lasts one marathon, that's how many 5Ks? That's fair. Yeah, or 10Ks? Yeah, that should be, should be more, know. right? Right? <laughs> yeah. To, to it, like what? How many 10Ks is that? Like four? Uh, four 10Ks. Four 10Ks. And that, so eight, like six to eight 5Ks or so. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with the viewers. They haven't. We haven't gotten our hands on that. We didn't. Yeah, get I, that. I, I, I wish. So we haven't. We haven't tried it. So I'm a little bit annoyed. But so I keep looking at eBay, going, "Oh, should I do this?" And the whole team's like, "Don't, don't do it. Don't, don't do that. It's not so worth it. It's not worth it. It'll, it'll come around eventually. Eventually, and then we could probably get it at well, not 500. Right. Or just like, t- <laughs> like two years from now, buy it on sale and, and review it super late. But so the other, the other conversation we were having. Um, which really kind of stimulus simulated us to go, you know what? We should do this as the main topic for the podcast is how these super shoes are affecting our training. Um, yeah. Do you want to share the, well, should we be careful of who, who we yeah, do? Yeah, with no, this? No, no, yeah. No, 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 no names, no names. No nothing, names. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, share yeah. the story. No, that kind of and honestly, about it's this. not yeah. even, it's not even names. It's, yeah. it's really, it's a, it's something that I'm noticing across a larger scale across the elite and sub elite audience. And that's probably anyone that's running from the range of 209 to, I don't know, let's say 216. And there's a lot of people, these shoes have been out long enough now, but recent enough to where you have a large enough population of people that have run marathons and half marathons before these shoes came out. And after these shoes came out and are still at a competitive age where you can't attribute it to age. You know, where it's not like, oh, well, they're 45. Of course, they're going to be running, you know, slower than they were when they were 28. You know, it's like, no, no, they're still in a very competitive age in their life. And a lot of people are running the same times. They're not getting that much better or worse, you know, and it's I, I'm trying to figure that out from a larger scale. And I, when I think of it, like um, from a training aspect standpoint, and I think it's a larger, you know, picture here. Um, I almost think of going, I mean, we're obviously very science oriented and we want to try and figure out the whys of things, but I think of it down to the root, you know, I, you just keep asking why, 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 why? And I, and I go down the rabbit hole and I think Dude, I'm a PhD of, students, what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> just kidding. Sorry. When you look at performances, okay. So it's stagnant. Why is it stagnant? Well, what was the major shift? Okay. So people got faster initially all of a sudden in 20, what, 16, 2017, everyone and their mother started breaking 220. That's fair. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you give it two years and now everyone plateaus. You know, and some of them aren't running faster than what they were before. And I think to some degree, it comes down to a physiologic adaptation standpoint. And this is, again, a rabbit hole. I'm talking out of my butt here, right? I don't have any data to actually back this. And if you disagree, please, please comment below or email us because this is just a conversation we are thinking out loud. So please disagree with with us if you want, because I'm, I'm with David on this, but we'll have a conversation. We'll see how this goes. Yeah, but but I think about this, right? And I think about, okay, so why is it plateauing? And let's look at some training principles here. And it's like, okay, so people are putting super shoes on more and more and more. And you wear them during your workout, great. You run a good workout. You're Let's just say you're a good responder. You are 4 to 5% more economic in a given shoe. And you feel good. You feel less beat up. And you're getting through your workouts. You're recovering. And you you feel good. And you can keep that training cycle going over and over and over again. But when you look at some of the larger scale things and they, and they're, when you look at the performances and they're not getting better, it's like, so why aren't they getting better? They feel better. They're responding to the workouts and then they go through on race day and they're running the same exact thing. And I think to some degree, if the training impulse from a physiologic work side of things is not is now lower you know like you're not working as hard to hit those same paces and you're getting really good at running those paces in that shoe but then when push comes to shove you're not able to actually shift that gear forward anymore and so i don't know if it's better 
to do like a, a hybrid. Obviously, you want to put these shoes on before you actually use them. Like, I'm not saying don't wear super shoes. Can, but, I, can I interject? There? Yeah, yeah, go for it. Because Justin Matthias, who was nice enough to send up some of his research, and again, we, we referenced him a couple weeks ago, but hope his master's def- dissertation defense or uh, thesis went well. Um, Justin, keep it in your mind. Um, but his study, although it was a small subject number, there's only two people that that continued, I think, with the, the, the flat. It was a comparing training for eight weeks in flats versus super shoes and looking at economy differences and jump height and stuff like that. The two people that trained in flats had much larger overall economy improvements compared to those that had were just in the super shoes. They also had, if I remember correctly, better maintenance of things like jump height and stuff like that, which was done without a super shoe versus those that were, that wasn't as good. You didn't have as big economy improvement, but at the very end, when you compare the two of them, the ones that were running in super shoes did best in the super shoes. They seem to adapt most get the get like what am I trying to say? They seem to ad- have adapted best to them because they that's now this the the environment or the tool that they are best at using. Those who maybe didn't, maybe didn't respond as well because it's a new stimulus. So we're not saying don't use these, but just be aware that. Yeah, you if you if you want to use them, you do have to get used to them because they are very different than traditional shoes, or at least they used to be. I mean, things are starting to change a little bit, but yeah, things yeah. are getting closer and closer. Yeah. The waters the are getting more and more muddy. Training shoe wise, yeah, yeah. But I I just think there is something to be said for that because there's so many people. I mean, even down like our top Americans, what two hundred seven high, two hundred eight yeah. low. That was the same. That was the same case before super right. shoes. Right. Like it's, we had like I one or two like, people that could do that. Right. And like maybe there was a 206, like, you know, Ryan Hall or whomever was running. Yeah. Two, could go one 206. Yeah. A special talent's going to go run sub 207 regardless, right. is how I feel, you yeah. know? And when you look, I mean, sure, the masses have all gotten faster, but the masses have also plateaued. Right. Like yeah. there's a crap ton of guys that can run 210 to 215. But like, there's not that many guys. Well, even 209, there's a lot of 209 guys, but like, why aren't we going any faster? Hmm. You know, and it's, I I honestly don't know. And this is not a shot at any of those guys. Like, this is just the thinking process. We're just asking questions. about. By all means, I want Connor Manson, Clayton Young, and, you know, CJ Albertson. Like, I I want all these guys to go and run really, really fast, you Mm -hmm. know? But just looking at it objectively from the outside, it's just so interesting to like, why are we staying at this area? Right. You know, and I don't know. I don't know what their training looks like. I don't know how much they're in these shoes. I Again, this is all speculation. It is. Yeah. But we're making some strong assumptions here. We're making some very strong assumptions. And I feel really bad for doing that. I don't don't want to have a great conversation. Yeah. I just don't want to take anything away from any of the athletes. You know me. I'm I'm always on the athlete side every single time. But at the same time, in order to get the most out of the athlete, I do kind of feel like if if the shift with the shoes did increase performance that much, and let's say you are that much more economic in those shoes, maybe you do have to, if you are using those shoes and training a lot, maybe you do have to shift that training impulse yeah. to be faster and harder so that you right. get that work impulse on your body and actually create physiologic adaptations. Right. Because if you're comfortable the whole time, at some point or another, you're going to have to push. Right. You know, if you're racing Elliot Kipchoge and he's going to go run a 202, 203 on you and you're trying to be relevant in that race and you've been practicing for 208, you know, it's like, well, good luck, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> that's that's so much faster over right. such a large amount of time. It doesn't sound like much. You know, the jump between three flat and 250 you know, is something that a lot of people can make in, you know, a year, two years time. The The shift from 210 to two flat is a whole nother story. The margin of error is so small. Right. And the paces only get faster. And so I don't know. I feel like from an adaptation standpoint to really maximize what your body can do, you almost have to over train in something yeah. else and then switch into it I, but i don't know it, like i, you I see where you're going for both ways i don't so what i think i'm hearing is and we've talked about this before super shoes don't make you faster they allow you to hold paces for longer periods of time and i think that goes back to the track spike comment we're like yeah these feel great holding these paces forever but if i really want to go like that track spike right track spike training in those that that 
that you can really turn over. It's the lighter weight, the better traction. The super, you're not going to take a track spike for a marathon, but so the these shoes are designed to allow you to go longer. And from what I'm hearing, I think they increase they we think they increase your capacity. But if you increase your capacity this much, but you're only still training here, you're not going to get the same benefit. These shoes are protective. That's a very I need to be very careful with how I say that word, but because it makes you more economical, if you don't push to that maximal level, right? And you just push here, even if that's just as fast as you used to, you're not going to say get the same stimulus as what you used to get doing these in non super shoes. Your body still gets better in response to stimulus if you can recover from it, but it has to be enough that really challenges that less stimulus, less adaptation. So that would make sense. And I, I think we've talked about this before that at some point you're going to adapt to the stimulus. That's why we were cautioning. Right. Going, yeah. These super shoes are great. I love them. Like I've done, I will explain. Oh, so totally. Yeah. yeah. I, they're awesome. I've got a whole wall. Like, I know. Is, this, is it in I've, frame? Let me see. I've yeah, done yeah, there we go. more yeah. <laughs> insane stuff in this, in these shoes than I ever have. Like I yeah. just, I, I did a 10 mile run and it was, I had a, a 10 minute uphill tempo workout with the stroller this morning that almost killed me. And I just went and did the same thing before this. I would have never been able to do that in traditional shoes. But part of the reason I can do that is because I'm like, yeah, I still got energy from this morning. Let me go max this out. Is that very smart training wise? I don't know. I'm not an elite runner. I'm just doing <laughs> dumb stuff and seeing what's happening. But that got me You're thinking. Elaborate. Yeah, I'm elaborate. I was like, that got me thinking. And this hopefully doesn't come off the wrong way. I'm not trying to be rude and saying we're not training hard enough. But if you give you give yourself something that makes you more economical, it's not free. It means if you want the stimulus to get faster, it actually you means you have to push more. that yeah. much harder. And I was listening to an interview with Renata Canova. Hopefully I'm saying his, his name correctly, but he's a coach of a lot of these like super fast Kenyans. And one, and somebody asked him like, what do you think is the biggest difference between now and 30 years ago? And he goes, you know, there's a lot of things that have changed. Our understanding is training is improved. Nutrition is improved. Obviously gear is improved. But one of the things that is just that has, the clearest difference is these athletes are pushing harder and with more intensity than they ever have. And part of that might be some of the shoes allow them to do that, but they are running so fast. And what kind of yeah. struck me is he's like, yeah, these athletes are running like 98%, 99% of their marathon pace for almost a marathon every like 10 days to two weeks. That's insane. That means totally. that when yeah. they get, <laughs> when they get to marathon day, they're like, yeah, I've done this all the time. A, exactly. It's nothing new. It's, it's not like, a foreign experience. It's not yeah. a foreign experience. We are like, <laughs> good luck staying with them because then when they get that last like 105% that you can give during a race, then you're like, oh my gosh. So we really shouldn't be surprised when people are running like uh, the recent game with the Tokyo Marathon that ran 202. It's like, yeah, he probably does not far off that like a uh, hundred times. Like that's, yeah, you know, but I think that's an example of, and I need to be very cautious when I say this, is people, some people are willing to take these things and push them to the absolute limit. And if you're hurting just as much as you did before, you're going to get the stimulus. But you have to realize that if you do the same thing as you did with the super shoes before, you may not experience as much improvement and you may plateau quicker because you're not, this is so rude. You're not, he's like, you're not pushing as you're much as you're used to. You're not working hard enough. You're not, yeah, you're and, not and I'm working not meaning, as hard, yeah. Right, I'm not meaning to be rude, but I also wonder if it's not just, hey, are you pushing as hard as you, are you pushing enough? Is Are we simplifying this? Maybe that's not the case. Maybe there is some level of adaptation that your body goes through. It's like, well, I don't need to, right? Like, there's something yeah, and you can make the case too, like yeah, oh, something well, in the nervous go system. Run. Yeah, something that that like holds you back or like because I'm seeing you're totally right. Like I've seen this and had a lot of athletes that I've talked to that non-elites to go, yeah, I had such a huge burst when these shoes came out. Now I, I I'm struggling to get faster, right? And there's lots of factors that go into this. I think what Dave and I are trying to get at is, and you correct me in just a second, is you know are is the concept of maybe having some things to rotate through and really thinking about what's the point of this to tool <laughs> and being really specific with it important which we're not going to do because we're shoe geeks and we're going to run in whatever and do stupid things well i am you're smarter than i am I'm, I, I'm, 
I, I'm laughing because our original episode was on shoe rotation. I know. Maybe we should. Change. And you're like, oh, we're going to do a rotation. <laughs> should we go into that now? Like, no, go back to we I, now. We'll save uh, it. Yeah. We don't need a three hour episode on our hands. Yeah. Two, three Speaking hours. Speaking of which, before I, I can go any farther, for those of you that have made it this far, 30 minutes of this episode. So we promised you we'd tell you that super secret. So we are partnering with Running Warehouse over the next several episodes and several weeks. Um, and they've been gracious enough to provide us a couple hundred dollar gift cards that we are going to be giving out each episode so if you want to be entered in the raffle for one of these please on youtube please comment below and you'll be automatically entered so hey just answer the subjective give us a hard time tell us we're wrong do something right enter in below and uh comment below and we'll you'll be entered in uh to the raffle that we will happily give away to support all your uh running needs that we are causing i'm just kidding <laughs> yeah <laughs> Congrats you if you made it this far through us geeking out. <laughs> but it's just an interesting concept, right? Yeah. Like, and I think too, one thing with a lot of those like East African training groups, again, assumption, I don't live with them. I don't train with them. Yeah. Right. But so much of their runs are on like rolling yep. dirt roads and like they're, they're working. Yeah. You know, you see what they're doing. Like they are not. You could run that easy and that's still a solid run. Like some yes. of the stuff I see yeah. and I'm like, holy crap, they're running that pace through that. And it's like, okay, now put them on a flat road and they're going to run like, yep. it's not that hard. Right. So I think some of it too is just literal training stimulus as well. They, when I, I was very fortunate before I left for PT school down in Southern California, when I was, I came back from college, I probably told the story before. I came back to Portland in college, and while I was working at a couple of running stores during that summer, I was very lucky that I met a couple guys from Kenya and Ethiopia who are running for Nike and Adidas, which are located, their headquarters, U.S. headquarters are in Oregon. They were nice enough to say, hey, you want to tag along? And I was like, sure. Um, and they were the absolute masters of knowing when to push and when not to. So I think they optimized that training stimulus because – when we were running easy, it was like eight, nine, 10 minute pace. And these guys were all at that time. This is like a decade ago. They before super shoes were all like 205, 206, 207 guys running eight, nine, 10 minute pace on easy runs. But the second they did anything remotely hard, I got dusted. They were running so fast. And I was a 30 uh, coming off being a sub fight 15 minute 5k like 31 minute 10k guy in college and i was like you know it's not the fastest right i'm not d1 but they would just crush me and then when they need to run easy and so part of that is hey how hard are you going like are you maybe thinking about the watch too much and somebody asked us the other day going hey do you train by watch or by effort it's like i'm an effort person i just the watches there just be like oh that's interesting but yeah yeah i think they've optimized like that that training the, the the stimulus and recovery stuff really really well but that's a strong like you said we're not there i've never been to kenya ethiopia or any other of the east african countries of people that are really excelling and being at like running 202 i don't know i don't know if drugs are involved too i know it's a big accusation Whoa, right now okay i, I have <laughs> no idea i know somebody's gonna throw that out there in the youtube <laughs> comment not to take anything away right that happens in all sp- i don't know oh. I, I, somebody's gonna say that i know doping you know, Man, but that was not something I was ready for. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I I don't I don't know. Right? It's 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 amazing uh, the amazing feats I mean, of the human body. But if you want to get say, to that level, regardless of yeah, the country or where anyone is, <laughs> yeah, it's rampant in any endurance sport. So yeah, I guess fair. there's always some speculation. Yeah. I don't know. We're not there. We have no idea. But just curious. <laughs> Going back to the shoes, asking like, hey, you know, we always talk about shoes or tools and how are, how are the, how are we utilizing these tools? If you want to optimize your performance, if not, don't ignore all of this, but if you're trying to optimize your performance, no matter if you're running a 30 minute 5k or a 12 minute, 12 and a half minute 5k, it doesn't matter. It's still like, maybe it does, but it, you know, how are we adapting this? How are we getting that? No, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day. We get better what you stimulus yeah. and rest, right? That the, and the more you can optimize that, the higher you'll perform. And who knows what your limit is, right? So yeah, and that's not to say there's always some level of a specificity, yeah. right? Like you're if you're gonna go run a twelve something five k in spikes, chances are you do a lot of spike work. 
Yeah. <laughs> like you feel comfortable running a 12 right. something in spikes on right. the 5k. So I guess, so here's my question. If you had, cause this goes back to David trying to decide, do you want to wear flats or spikes for this upcoming 5k? So if you had spikes and super shoes that both weighed the same amount, which would you choose? Yeah. And that's a great question, right? Like, and I think it would depend on, I think it wouldn't be on the weight. I think yeah. it would be on how the shoe feels at Got the it. toe off, you know, like how do I actually feel when I'm trying to push the pace? Because at some point or another, you're going to have to pick up the pace. You're going to have to respond to a move. Like you're going to going off the line. Like you don't need to be urgent and you watch five K's. A lot of yeah. times people just get off the line and like, maybe they run fast for 50 meters and then everyone settles. Yeah. Right. Like everyone just kind of settles into whatever the pace that race is going. Right. So obviously like if you're running a 13 low, like world-class five K for them, yeah. that's still a pretty comfortable pace, mm -hmm. right? It's comfortable until it isn't right. And that's how it is for any race. But like you watch them, they all look like they're jogging. They're, they're, they're fine. You Must know, and nice. then, yeah. Then you pass two miles and then the real race begins. Yeah. Right. And so that's going to happen whether or not you're a 12 minute or a 30 minute. Right. Like, like you said, and it's really what happens in that third mile. And mm -hmm. so that's the thing where I was thinking earlier, I was like, well, if I feel good, like if my calves are good and everything feels great in the third mile, maybe the super shoe is the answer. But if I really want to pick it up and I'm trying to be aggressive and I'm going and really leaning into the track and I don't feel, I feel clunky in the super shoe or something like then I'm going to really want that spike. Right. <laughs> Assuming my legs hold up and everything's equal, yeah. you know? Um, so I don't know. I, it's just, it was just a thought bubble that popped right. up and I figured we just make a little episode yeah. out of that. I don't know. I don't know. My 36 answer, you know? minutes later, a little. Yeah. Episode, yeah. yeah. I, I think, um, the only way to truly respond to that is to have a pair of Evos, right? So if yeah. anyone's out there listening and wants to send me some you know, Evos. Send Dave uh, and I no. Evos will test out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Evo one. Soft so, plug. No. <laughs> so what do you think? We also talked about this a little bit, but, you know, a lot of the spikes have changed too. Like this, the spikes oh, totally. of yesteryear. Yes, of course. We didn't yeah. even address that Yeah, as the spikes much as of yesteryear, for those who, the, of, who use them or are well, curious here, about I'll them, grab some. are not the same at all, right? Like, Where's oh I don't have any I I finally I donated my Avantis my my original like before the Light Strike Pro I oh I don't have them I don't have my and I gave stuff. one of your teammates my pair I still have my um, no oh my but not, not the not the Light Strike Pro one though but the the regular just just straight up track spike oh the, the OG red, like the red uh, on white do you remember the yeah, the real bright cherry red yeah like those, those ones yeah, I, yeah the OGs I have, yeah I don't have them anymore that's actually that's okay. a shame I was yeah, wearing we, them in that picture right there that yeah. was <laughs> do you have the current uh, like your some of your current track spikes right now yeah yeah I've got a few let me just grab them do you know is there an embargo on the one I showed you before the episode you didn't show me a track spike before the episode I did I already talked about it we just won't grab that one yeah that's fine let me uh let me see here all right here we go I wonder if there's BJ one. is going to edit this part out or not we'll there's find out one. I'm curious there's one there's another okay I mean Casper sorry Casper, the friendly ghost, strikes yeah. again. Um, Saucony Terminal VT. Really solid spike. Yeah. I actually, I think this, ironically, it's meant for like the distances, 5K, 10K. Yeah. I think when I was in college, this could have been like an ideal 1500 spike for me. Agreed. I yeah. never really loved the really aggressive spikes. And so this, with how light it is, I mean, this thing's like high three ounces, I think. Yeah. Like it's, it's it, this is light. Like you put, light. pick this up, yeah. it doesn't feel like much. But it has good stack for the track spike world. Power on HG that's yep. in the Endorphin Elite. That's I'm not saying it, just objective. Yep. Uh, Adidas Avanti, Light Strike yep. Pro, you know, fits right at that world athletic stack height standard. A little bit heavier, a little less aggressive, a little more flexible. So for yep. those that kind of want that, that's a good option. That is classic Adidas track spike, by the way, like that. The Avanti, yeah. Elite, Avanti's always been like that. A little bit heavier, almost like borderline of flat. That's okay. Yeah. 
And then you have the dragonfly, so yeah. very clearly a spike, right? Yeah. Where it has that very spooned out kind of feel to it. But the Zoom X midsole is in it, and it again abides by World Athletic standards. Oh, there's no embargo on the shoe we talked about. No, no, no. there isn't. No, okay, it's I'll grab could, it then. You could buy it on their website. Oh, sweet. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm the one that thinks about these things before That's I fair. say things. I don't. I'll, I'll put that out there. It's no. on their website because I, I stock everyone's websites to see what's available. That's uh, New Balance MDX. So this has been yeah. out for a minute, but that's been out a, for a while. Yeah. But here's a good thing right here. Spikes are aggressive, right? Are. And so this is a middle distance spike. Yes, I've run in it, but <laughs> it's very spooned out. You're yeah. very on your toes. It amazes me that people will run 5Ks in that. That is insane to me. People yeah. do. Yeah, and Emma Coburn was racing the three K steeple on this. Yeah, yeah, like that makes sense. Yeah, granted, she's probably got calves of right. steel. Yes, but uh, let me see. So the other one, and it kind of sparked the conversation because these yeah. were a recent acquisition. Um, the Brooks Hyperion LD. Yeah, Hyperion Elite LD. Hyperion yeah. LD doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, it's their long distance track spike. Obviously, Josh Kerr has been running quite well in it. Um, but I think we were saying this before. I think Josh Kerr would run fast because he's Josh Kerr. Yeah. Regardless of what's on his foot. You yeah. know, again, always on the side of the athlete here. Yeah. But um, so that that is you're right. That is what stimulated the conversation because we're going, you know, how much are track spikes really impacting efficiency? You know, over a marathon distance, totally makes sense to have these shoes because efficiency. Oh, no, is no, you everything. know what actually? What? You know what actually sparked the conversation? It wasn't that. It was your eBay <laughs> stalking habits. Oh yeah, my bad. Getting so uh, we should have a review out of this soon because Klein hounded on eBay. Wow, wait, um, ran me out. I'm gonna get in trouble. <laughs> they need to be pissed. <laughs> Yes. So For my the, uh, eBay hunting, I found a pair of on the on the uh, uh, 10k spikes for 60 bucks on eBay. On brand LD, new, whatever, and I like yeah. immediately pulled the trigger one to try them. Which I'm not supposed to do, but so that's actually what sparked all of fair. this. All right, way to wrap me out. <laughs> we'll find out if Nathan listens to this episode or not. We're doing it live. Yeah. So the question again was, hey, over these distances, you know, there's been a lot of changes in track spikes because now you got some, you got a lot of the super foams in them. They've moved away from PBAX plates to now a lot of carbon plates. Things are getting stiffer, higher stack height again with the 25 millimeter limit. But how much of that is really affecting times now? I I will admit. I think it, they've been more comfortable, right? The increased cushioning there makes it a little bit easier. Although my calves feel just as worked, to be honest with you. They just feel a little bit more cushioned, yeah, uh, cushioned and, a little less harsh than they used to. But And know. it's tough because I don't know how much of that is not being trained up to being in spikes, right? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think know either. where this is showing its biggest impact, though, I think is in the 1500. Yeah. And it's really interesting. So if anyone wants to go do a study and go get data on this, out of all of the events, when I look at the large improvements in times from a massive standpoint, the one event that doesn't seem to be touched very much is the 800. Yeah, that's fair. I feel like the standards to get into NCAs, yeah. the standards to get into USAs, yeah. who's winning at what times and qualifying for Worlds, yeah. those times have stayed relatively consistent. Right. Somewhere between 143 and 145, that's always been the case. Right. The uh, I would also argue for the 1500 that we, you know, maybe so we've seen some pretty qu- awesome indoor times, but overall, I no, guess people are getting too. closer, closer, but nobody's, has somebody, did I miss that somebody ran that beat Hickamel Garouge's? Well, that, no, but again, yeah. Garouge is going to run what Garouge runs, I think, yeah, exactly. regardless of yeah. what's on his foot. Like, I think those are the outliers. But I think when you look at the masses, it's like you look at University of Washington has eight sub four milers. You look at yeah. like the just the sheer amount. I forgot I had the count on this like a yeah. while ago, but that Boston meet had like 40 something sub four yeah, miles. It's insane. You know, yeah. that used to be special when I was in college. That was special. That wasn't that long ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> now I feel like, like, dude, you haven't broken four. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, like it'd be like, oh, yeah. What'd you run? I don't know. Four or something. Oh, you're slow then. Like, yeah. it's just like, it's just crazy how many people are running right. somewhere in that high 330, 1500 range. Right. 
or low 340 range, you know, or. But can in, we attribute that all to the shoes? To Devil's Advocate, can we no, attribute I, that all I to the shoes, so, though? I, I think yeah. a lot of it's training. I think a yeah. lot of it is programs. A lot of them yeah. come from the same programs, right? There's a lot more meets that facilitate this where yeah. it's like, oh, you go there to run the 1500 or you go there yeah. like Brian Clay outdoor 1500 all day. Yeah. You can be in heat six and run a, a fantastic right. 1500. And then it's like Boston, obviously, for the indoor mile. But so I, I do think there's other factors at play here. But I feel like these ultra responsive shoes, it's like you're the 1500s, a weird event where there's it's just long enough to where fatigue can still kind of play a factor and mental fatigue and attentiveness and how you yeah. are within the race. I feel yeah. like the 800 is at that dividing point where it's uh. like if your body gives, it gives. You know, you go and run a 50 point first lap and then hang on for dear life the second lap. I don't know if it matters quite as much. And I think that's showing, you know what I mean? Like on the spikes, like your, your body's gas, like you're literally maxing yeah. out. You're just shy of maxing out from the gun. So you think that, <laughs> that this makes a larger effect on the 1500 and 5k, but eight, 800 is like, is the kind of the gate where below that it's not any additional cushioning or things like that may not, it's probably not going to matter. Yeah. And then to, again, to look at this again, like look at the 400 times, have the 400 times changed that much. Well, I mean, to be fair, devil's advocate here, like the margin of error, the margin of in, like change you're going to see. Exactly. Gonna smaller, it's it's going to be smaller, right? but how many 43s are you what's seeing? What's her name? Uh, Fem, uh, Fem Kibble. Yeah, who just broke her own uh, indoor. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I, I feel like Fem Kibble, again, though, outlier. I think she's going to go around sure. 49 regardless. Got it. Like, that's what I like. You look at someone like Sydney McLaughlin. She was around before some of the and she's young. But she was around before some of these advancements in foams. Yeah. And granted, she did run faster, but I think she was also getting faster. She was mm -hmm. so young. Like, it, it's so hard yeah. to delineate that. Right. But looking at someone who's older, let's say Dalila Muhammad in the same event, like, her improvements were also small and marginal. So it's like, I don't know. It's it's so hard to say, right? Like, <sighs> But I, I can't help but feel like the 1500, I don't know why, like I feel like the impacts are larger there. Yeah. And why do you say that? I, know I you think it's because sure, I think it's a short enough distance to where no matter what, you're going to pick spikes, right? You're, you're pumping into the ground pretty right. hard running a 1500. But those spikes I mean, have seen some significant changes over the years. Like even the 15, like, an, like the Nike, um, oh my gosh. The well, different colored pair. Why am I forgetting what the name of this bike is? The ones the that victory? we all had. The victory. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah. The like Nike 3. Is like, 1, 3. Yeah. Ounces. Like we, yeah. we all ran those. There was nothing there. There was like a little p plate and that was it. That was the only thing between your foot mm -hmm. and the ground. And now we have all the shoes. Dragonfly and yeah, Victory the Dragonfly, 3. The victory, all these shoes have as much possible Zoom X or uh light strike pro or power run h they all have the max amount there but yeah they has that made a big difference i think it has i think it has i mean i think there's like i don't know what else to attribute having 80 something guys <laughs> run <laughs> under a mark <laughs> like like when it's not special anymore you know people stop counting it <laughs> like there used to be like a counter of how many and they're yeah. like i don't i give up we, can't keep, like, we don't count that high anymore yeah like university high. of washington was it like how many sub four miles could be at that's the right. dempsey yeah, right and it was right. like that was a list and it was under a hundred so if i remember correctly when yeah. i was running and it was like now in a single year you're yeah, gonna you have not yeah. counting pros you're gonna have yeah you're gonna have 60 plus in the same year yeah if not like closer to 80 and like including pros you're yeah. well over a hundred yeah. so it's so I, don't, back, I don't know yeah going to stimulus stuff so we just talked about this with the super shoes when it comes to super spikes do you think some of those concepts that we talked about also apply going hey you know what makes you more economical you're gonna need to push hard to get the same mm. stimulus do you think that also applies because these shoes are that's a great question same foams but it's technically a different design I think it's okay. That's a great question because I think it is so much easier to hit race stimulus when you're working towards a 1500 as well. So much, right? If you're racing at sub 60 per lap, you got to run sub 60 per lap, right? Like, and that's not going slow. If you've ever mm -hmm. run a 400 
like a sub four mile is very special. It still is to me, even though we just said that like everyone's doing it, but you still have to go run. Like if you look at, go to your local 800, like go to your local high school meet and go look at how many guys run under two minutes in the 800. It's not that many. It still isn't. And it's like, as you get older, like you got to run under that two minute mark twice, go to a college meet. Like, yes, there's going to be a lot of guys running under two flat. Like they're in college. Like now they're a little bit older. They have more competitive experience. But then again, like they got to double that. The amount of like 157 to two flat guys you see is relatively high. But those guys are running more like 410 to 415 when it actually translates over to the 15. So it's like, I think even though the 800 times aren't seeing these giant jumps, let's say you take your three, I don't know, uh, 338 to 341 1500 or your 356 to four flat miler they're not running 146 or 147 you know what i mean like like the gap and these margins are so small right but like they're still running i don't know they're usually probably 152 guys 151 guys like and then if you look at the guys that are running even faster like they're the 800 it's not shifting is what, it's what I'm getting at. Yeah. It's like you're looking at these 350 milers and you look at someone like Cole Hawker. What did he run? He ran 146, I think. That's actually really good. But I'm thinking like Centrowitz ran, what did he run? 148, 147, something like I have that. No idea. But the guy can That's run great. 350. Yeah. You know, and so I, I feel like when you start seeing these advancements, like, and oh, that's unfair too. Did he run that before Dragonflies? I uh, I know I got a history fact check my own self on that, but I just I just feel like the masses like I'm not seeing shifts in the shorter event, but I'm seeing for the same people, and you're seeing these massive jumps in the other, and I think it's easy to do 800 1500 work and be a middle distance athlete and see big improvements in the 1500 and not see it as much in the 800. And maybe that means the 800 people have to train more like 400 people. I don't know. It worked for Donovan Brazier. I don't know yeah. if it, but obviously he's had plenty of yeah. injury issues himself and right. things like that. So I don't know where the tipping point is on that. This is all, again, I'm speaking out of my butt here, but yeah. I'm going to take uh, this to the record, to the yeah. recreational runner. Cause I feel like the average marathon time is still increasing. And part of the, the well, major thing is more people oh, it, are yeah. participating Great this, point. It just than ever before, which is awesome. Like people are active, they're doing marathons, which is awesome, right? This is more accessible. They have shoes that facilitates it's more accessible. So I don't think everyone overall is getting faster. You, just like I said, I think the shoes increase your capacity to do things, right? You can do stuff for like hold the pace for longer. And I think you're right that over the 800, especially with, even if you add some of these foams and these designs to like the the spikes i think you're right some of the shorter distance it's not going to matter as much and i will even say anecdotally from looking at some data of some of the individual like people running road 5ks like your average road 5k i don't think the times are that much faster a lot kind of the, the the winning times typically in the average place is still in your 17 18 minute unless you're in a faster area and you get that one 15 minute you know high school or college guy or maybe post collegiate guy occasionally and then you, if you go to like a race with prize money or real stuff, you might see a 13 or 14 minute, right? Or US road championship. But a lot of the times I think are quite similar because again, these shoes, I'm going to say it again, increase your capacity to do things for longer. They don't necessarily make you faster. And I think if you understand that, hopefully it helps you figure out training wise, if you really want to get faster, you have to train to be faster, right? And that might mean either you got to run harder with these super shoes or maybe you do some workouts without them and that might give you a bigger stimulus. I don't know. Each person's going to be really different. Like I'm yeah, training think, harder than I ever, I mean, not including marathon stuff when I was doing it with my wife, I'm training harder than I ever have. And it's, I, I don't know how much stimulus I'm getting. I'm just doing it because I want, I need to test shoes. I need to get miles and I like running fast so I can do a double threshold. Is it because I'm training? No, I just want to see what happens. Uh, but I would never be able to do that. I wish I yeah. was as bulletproof as you, man. This yeah. dude can take uh, a hit. Yeah. Like. <laughs> I do dumb stuff just because, and I would have never been able to do this uh, in, in traditional flats. You know, I, I dabbled in some of the stuff in my life, but I never would have been able to do that stuff. I was beat up for days. Whereas 
I can do this now in these shoes. It's not me. I'm not definitely not better, but you know how that impacts me long term. We'll see. I don't know. I have no idea. And more people are talking about double thresholds. So, yeah, I think I was kind of getting at that with the 1500, and I never yeah. like fully established that point. Yeah, was that that's just long enough for some of those fatigue resistant type properties and those shoes to kick in. Yeah, where like okay, you can hold that 59 yeah. for one more lap longer than you probably could have before. And that's the difference yeah. between three, four seconds on a race, depending that's how fair. hard you're kicking, yeah. you know, if it, if that 59 would have been a 62 yep. or something like that. Yeah. And I, I don't know again, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. but it's, it's hard to look at those results and be like, why are so many people running faster? It's not, it'd be one thing if it was like, oh, okay, so the NCA regional standard shifted three seconds. Yeah. You know, and it's like, okay, well, three seconds is a lot, but that's, you know, I don't know, it's kind of reasonable. But at the same time, it's like people are just running stupidly fast. Yeah. Like when I was in school, if you ran like 14 it's like, oh, you got a chance at making a regional. It's like now it's like, Four, like you got to run like 1340 yeah and you're still a bubble guy 5k yeah. yeah yeah like that is insane yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> i i mean this is anecdotal from what i've kind of watched but like when we were in college would you have ever thought about doing double workout days was that like ever a thing uh i, I don't know if i would have been opposed to it i i, no, I did you did you do that or did you know about anybody really doing that not really. We we kind of not know. Like maybe yeah. we had like a short threshold thing, like in the morning, and then maybe some like sprint work in the afternoon, but not no, like, like not, not like too true full voluminous workouts. workouts. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like there wasn't anything. We never. No. And I, I I'm seeing that as I kind of just geek out and like look at the training of some of the collegiate athletes. They're doing stuff like that, and part of it is yeah, when they're on the they're using super shoes on the road, so they can yeah. do a hard workout in the morning, and then they can go do a track a insane track workout in the afternoon. And you're a collegiate athlete, so I think. Some programs are definitely maximizing their the capacity with which these athletes are doing. How good that is long term, I don't know whether they're going to burn out or, yeah. not or what have you, or whether they're just getting better volume of athletes who have this incredible potential. And not every person is going to be able to do that. So it's a very strong blanket statement. But I think yeah, a lot and that's of the same thing we're talking they're, about. Like, yeah, they're training capacity, really ability hard. to do work, yeah. getting that stimulus right. Yeah. And if you can get more stimulus yeah. and recover, then you can adapt more. Right. But and to do that, you actually have to push into that limit still. You and have so, to put the work in. Yeah. yeah. And so we're just in a weird gray area right now where I think training volume and yeah. intensity is just like, we're just hitting uncharted territory. Yeah. I don't know. So we don't know. Yeah. And people are playing around and we're getting some fun results and we're seeing fast times and it's great. And it's I love it. Yeah. It's just, I'm just trying that. to figure out the why behind it. So yeah. that's, the, that's like my ramble for the last, you know, hour here, right. but that's okay. Yeah. My <laughs> last is just wondering like, Hey, like with the capacity that we're pushing into, like, you know, I think some people are really maximizing and going all in and we've got some really cool understanding of how sleep and nutrition really impacts us. Notice I didn't say anything about foam rollers or all that stuff that that could be some nice adjuncts. It makes you feel better, but like sleep is being our sleep understandings better. Our nutrition is so much better understood how we're recovering. Like people are getting better. Plus you add these things for the incredible ability to do work, I think is great. Just again, for the rest of us who aren't elite collegiate or elite athletes, ask yourself, you know, you know, how am I getting the best stimulus out of this? How do I try to figure out how to get better if performance is your goal? If your performance is not your goal, you just want to run, like go for it. You know, if somebody comments. Yeah, there's the nothing day, wrong with yeah. that. I feel like this yeah. whole episode, we've been talking performance yeah, related things. We are geeking you out wanna, the yeah. all day, all belief. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go out and have fun and enjoy your run and yeah, have a go, great time at the race? What? By all go, means, go do that, please. Go do like, that. Go train in we super need shoes you guys. <laughs> yeah. all the time. We get it. We're not picking on you at all. We get it. But when it comes to like all out performance, right? That's, that's, where we're going hey what what's going on why we're seeing plateaus some places we're seeing insane performance other places what does that mean so you let us know again comment yes because you could also get win a hundred dollar runner running warehouse uh, gift card but also comment because we're just curious to know what you think we are we're talking and we we're thinking and we want you to follow us along with that so please comment below let us know what you think about this conversation be it about the spikes be about the effects of super shoes how that's working for you if you are someone that's running in in, in the super spikes like 
What do you think? Do you think it's improving economy? And then for everyone else, you know, David's, you know, in that elite level, I'm not right. So like, <laughs> I don't know if I go that far. <laughs> you are now. So like these, these days looking at that word, that's, uh, <laughs> I know too much pressure. It's fine. Um, compared to me and the rest of us. Right. So it's like, what do you think the long-term impacts of some of these shoes? And I don't think it's that a big of a deal anymore. Cause like we said earlier, we talked about this before trainers are becoming super shoes. That's just how it is. Just curious to go, Hey, as the, as shoes increase our capacity, what do we need to do about it? So we'll comment below. Let us know your thoughts. We always really, we do read them if we don't respond to all of them. Cause a lot of people comment, but thanks as always for listening and especially listening to us geek out. We totally didn't do the episode we planned to, which we'll just do that next week. So <laughs> we'll just do it another time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It'll be thanks fine. for following along and letting us geek out. <laughs>